Pathway students, this is Brother Meller, and let's talk about the Life Plan Part 1. This assignment is the future budget. So you're going to imagine what your life will be like five years from now. Think about what your expenses will be and what your income will be at that time. Then we're going to make a spreadsheet to document and record your one month expenses and income. So remember, five years from now. If you're single now, maybe in five years you'll be married. Maybe you'll have children or more children, and maybe your young children uh, will be older than they are now. So let's look and see how this life plan will be scored. First of all, you need to use an electronic spreadsheet. That's no problem. We're going to build one today in Excel. Your student's spreadsheet, your spreadsheet should also be well organized in the English language and include appropriate labels. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute when we build one together. Your spreadsheet should be created from scratch. So there are templates on the internet, but what we want you to do is build one by yourself so you can learn how to use a spreadsheet like Excel. You'll get a few points also for making sure that your income is greater than or equal to your expenses. You want to make sure that you are not spending more money than you earn. Your spreadsheet should also include a title that describes the, the contents and the time period. And your spreadsheet should be submitted as an attachment that uses the proper file name, like this. It should say life plan underscore your name when you turn it into your pathway class. So let's build a budget and an expense sheet in Excel. This is Microsoft Excel. Yours might look a little different from mine. I'm using Excel on a Mac computer. You might be using one on a PC. So it might look a little different, but everything is still basically the same. Across the top, I have A, B, C, D. These are the columns that go up and down. And on the left side, they're numbered. These are the rows. You can click and make these bigger or smaller if you'd like to. And the same thing with the row heights. Clicking and dragging will make it bigger and smaller. So we're going to start off with a title. We're going to give this a title. Let's call it Budget and Expenses Five Years From Now. You can call yours something different if you like. We can change the font and we can change the size up here. Give it a nice title. And we'll start with our incomes. Maybe your income in the future is that you will be a teacher. And for that, you'll make 2,500 every month. Now let's talk about monthly bills that you're going to have each month. Tithing, of course, we're going to pay our tithing first. And we're going to put money into a savings account each month as well, pay ourselves. You probably have some sort of housing payment, like either a mortgage or rent, the cost to live somewhere. You might have a car payment. You might also just have household bills, like the power bill and the gas bill and cell phones and internet and things like that. So those are the bills that come every month. You might also have monthly expenses. Monthly expenses might be things like groceries, or fuel for your car. This would be a very basic budget. I'm gonna make this column a little bit wider. So this is just very basic. We're gonna add some more categories here in a second, but if I made 2,500, my tithing would be 250. Savings, you also wanna try and save about 10% of what you make in savings as well. Maybe your housing payment is $600 for rent, your car payment is $220, and your household bills might also be $250. Your monthly expenses like groceries, $450, and fuel for your car, $75. So let's make a total section down here. Totals. Total income. Well, total income right now is 
2,500. And total expenses. Now in this box, I'm going to have Excel add up all of my expenses for me in the total expense. So one of the best, strongest things about Excel is you can have the program do the math for you. So instead of entering a number in here, I'm going to enter a formula. And in order to tell Excel you're going to be doing a formula, you need to start with an equal sign. The formula to add is sum. That's what we call it when we're adding. So it's going to be equals sum, and it's going to ask what. I'm just going to click and drag it through all this section here. Everything there. I don't want to add the income box, so everything there, and then push return, and it's now adding up all of these total numbers for me. If I make a new category, like other, and add $250 to there, you can see that it automatically added that amount here. So my income is greater than my expenses, I have a title, I have sections like income and monthly bills and monthly expenses, and I have a total section here. And I'll make a difference. Let's add a formula. Equals my income minus my expenses. And you can see that if I made 2,500 and these were all my monthly expenses, I would still have $155 left over. So I am not spending as much as I am making, which is a good thing. This would be a very basic, basic way to do it. Let's add a little bit more to this. Maybe in five years time, you're married and your spouse works as well and makes a little bit more money. So instead of 2,500, we'll add a little bit more income to that. Let's break down some more categories here. You can right click and insert additional rows. I'm going to have one section for tithing and another section for offerings. Savings, house payment, car payment. Instead of household bills, I'm going to change this and actually write them all out. I have my monthly insurance payment. I have a power bill. I have an internet bill. I'm going to add some more columns or some more rows. I'll add some more rows here. So I have my power. I have my gas bill. Internet. Maybe cell phone bill. Under monthly expenses. Groceries. I'm going to add some additional categories here as well. By inserting more rows, I'm going to have dine out or eating out, fuel for my car. Instead of other, let's have some more specific categories. Maybe I have a clothing budget each month. Maybe I have a category for to save for home and car repairs. Maybe I have a category just for fun, for doing fun activities with my family or dates with my spouse. And maybe I'm going to add some more rows here for some extra categories. Maybe I'll have a category that is just other. Maybe my family is saving for a vacation. So there's some extra categories. Now let's add some color to try and make this a little bit more exciting. You can change the background colors up here. Maybe I'll make incomes kind of a green color and then these columns can be kind of more white green. Maybe my monthly bills, I'll make a dark blue for the heading and make the rest of them kind of a light blue. And maybe lighter. So monthly expenses the same, kind of a light blue on that, there we go, now we can make some, I'll combine these, merge these cells, I 
I can come back in and add the lines, the grid lines and the borders. Okay, maybe I'll make my total section yellow. Merge these and make it go to the left. And these boxes can all be light yellow. And put my lines around it. There we go. So this is starting to come somewhere. Now I have to change these numbers. Let's go back and change all of these numbers because I have lots of expense categories now. And I have more, more incomes with my spouse working as well. So total income. I'm not just going to write the number down here because I have an extra amount now. So let's let Excel do the math for me. Equals sum and push return. Uh, equals sum. Click here. There we go. I'm going to drag it across both of these. I want Excel to add those two. There we go. There's my total. Tithing. 10%, I can say, well, I know that 10% of 3,300 is 330. But then what if the amount of money or our income changes next month? Might be easier just to set this up as a formula too. Equals 0.1 or 10% times this box, my total income, and push return or enter. And it will now add the tithing for me. If my spouse next month makes not 800 but 1200, I can add, change that number here. It will automatically add that total here and it will automatically calculate the tithing here. I'll change it back to 800. So that is the beauty of using a formula because it will automatically change the number for you. So let's see. Tithes and offerings, maybe $40. A good rule of thumb is to put the same amount into savings as tithing, 10% of your income. Your housing payment might be $850 by then, and you might have a car payment of $200. Maybe your insurance is around $120. You might have a $50 power bill or a $30 gas bill. Internet might be 30, cell phone might be 50. Your numbers might be different. Different things are going to cost different amounts in different countries and at different times. Maybe your grocery bill in five years is 500 every month because you have teenage kids who eat a lot. Dining out might be 75. Fuel for your car, 75. Clothing, $70 maybe. It doesn't mean you have to spend $70 on clothing every month. Maybe you just put that much into a fund and then every August when it's time to go back to school shopping for the kids, you can spend three or four hundred dollars because you put $70 into that fund every month, month after month. Same thing with home and car repair. Maybe I'm going to put $150 in there and not spend any of it this month. But if I put $150 into that fund this month, and again next month, and then the month after that, I'm going to have $450. So if I have a big unexpected car repair, it's not going to kill me because I've already put the money away a little bit at a time every month. 100 in fund, 100 in other. Okay, now I'm all set. Maybe my family is saving for a family vacation. Maybe we'd like to go on a big trip this year, and we know that it's going to cost a couple thousand dollars. Well, instead of trying to pay for that all at once, maybe we want to set a family goal that we're going to put $200 into an account every month so that when the vacation comes, we have the money already saved ahead of time. That way, we won't have to pay for that vacation on a credit card. We'll already have the money all saved up. Here we can see now my income is 3300 and all of my expenses added up are 3,300, and the difference is zero. This is actually how I would recommend to do it. 
maybe if you're only saving a hundred for that vacation every month and you have a difference here, what I would recommend is always finding a job for this extra amount of money. Maybe you would increase the amount of money that you're going to put in savings every month by that amount. I like to always have the difference be zero. That way there isn't any leftover money. If there's leftover money here, it's always a good idea to put it into savings. Or if you're saving for a different purpose, like a family vacation or maybe repairs to your home, it's good to put it into these categories here so that every dollar has a job. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. Remember, we're going to save it as life plan underscore your name. So I'll save this as life plan underscore brother Miller. I'll save this to my desktop so that I can easily upload it to my teacher. And there we go. One budget and expenses five years from now.